What is going on everybody? Welcome back to The Common Coder. My name is Josh and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a GitHub account so that you can create, store, manage, and even share your code with the rest of the world. You can also take a look at code that's been written by other people and other companies and GitHub is pretty much the de facto standard when it comes to hosted repositories. So let's go ahead and dive in and learn how to create an account. All right, so the first thing that we need to do to create a GitHub account is head over to github.com. So I've already navigated here. You can see it says, let's build from here. It has a spot for you to enter your email address and to sign up for a GitHub account. So GitHub has a ton of features, uh, but we're mainly gonna focus on just creating the account. And then we'll have separate videos on how to set things up for local development and be able to clone repositories and push repositories up from your machine. So to create an account, let's go ahead and start by entering our email address. You can also use the sign up link up here on the top right. So I'm going to go ahead and click sign up for GitHub. And it's going to give us this little futuristic slash retro looking wizard. So it's going to ask me to enter my email. It's going to populate that from the screen I was on before. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Then it's going to prompt you to go ahead and create a password. So I'll go ahead and do that. Click continue. Then it's going to have you enter a username. So I actually haven't created a GitHub account for the common coder. Thus the reason for this video. So you get to see me walk through creating a GitHub account um, just out of my own lack of getting things done. So let's go ahead and enter a username. So this will be the common coder. Hopefully that's available. Oh, it is not available, man. What can we do here? Can we do dashes? Ah, so we'll do the dash common dash coder. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and enter a username. So my GitHub username will now be the dash common dash coder. So we'll go ahead and click continue. It's gonna ask me if I wanna receive email. Eh, I'll go ahead and do that and I can always cancel it if I don't want it. And then once we click the next button, it's gonna have us protect our account. So it says verify this puzzle so that we know you're a real person. So I'm gonna go ahead and click verify. Use the arrows to change the number of object until it matches the left image. Okay, this is interesting. Never seen one of these before. Go ahead and submit. All right, so we got two of these little bowling balls. What are those? Cats? Click submit. All right, and then we have zero, looks like tennis balls. Nope, nope. Doesn't look like any tennis balls there. Go ahead and click submit. All right, and then it sent me an email to my email address. So go ahead and get my email. Here's my GitHub launch code. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Looks like I can just click this, open GitHub. Yep, there we go. So enter code, paste it in, and boom, there we go. So once we have gone through the setup process in GitHub, we should land on this page here that's asking me to either start a new project, collaborate with a team. So if you're creating this for a company of sorts, you can create an organization, or we can learn how to use GitHub here. So I'm actually gonna just go ahead and skip all of this for now. And you can see it, it takes me to my homepage, which gives me kind of a feed as of today, start writing some code so I can create a new repository here. GitHub actually has some pretty cool features built in where you can write code in the browser. And since it's owned by Microsoft, there's even integrations with Visual Studio Code, which is pretty cool. I'm a little old fashioned in that regard. I like to clone things to my machine and work it locally and then push back up to GitHub uh, when I am finished. So yeah, so now we have a GitHub account and we can create repositories here. We can push repositories up. Um, however, we're going to learn all that stuff in another video. However, before we go, I just want to give you a quick tour of the menu, what you can find up here in your avatar menu. So if I go ahead and click on this, it'll show me my name. I can set a specific status. So there's a community aspect to GitHub. We have a profile so we can fill out information about ourselves in the profile. I can add additional accounts. So if I wanted to be able to switch between accounts like you would on say a social media site or things like that, where you can have multiple accounts and you can switch between them. Same idea here is you'd have to click on this and go ahead and log in. Gonna go ahead and click back. And from here we can see we have our repositories. So this is going to be our repositories, our Git repositories. So Git is the source control software. It's centered around the idea of repositories and commits. And then when working with GitHub, you can actually push those repositories to what's called your remote, when in this case it's gonna be GitHub, and then you can share that code or, or collaborate, um, save it off, you know, off of your local machine, pull it back down to another machine, collaborate with other people, um, so on and so forth. So it's considered a distributed source control system because you can 
download or clone is the uh, official Git terminology. You can clone a repository down to your machine, make whatever changes you need to, do a bunch of local commits, and then you don't have to actually upload or push those changes up to GitHub until you specify. So it's a little different than what you would think from automatically connected systems that you might have worked with previously. Um, Git gives you the flexibility to really work offline in your own development environment and then push the changes when you're ready. Projects is kind of built on top of that. Projects allows you to you know, work on a software project that can consist of one repository or maybe multiple repositories, and it lets you track the tasks um, on a Kanban type board, and uh, that way you can map out the work um, that needs to be done for your project. So Copilot is another thing that GitHub offers. GitHub Copilot specifically is a paid feature that you know lets you do uh, some really cool AI stuff out of the scope of this video, but you have access to anything that Copilot offers through this tab here. If I'm part of any organization, so if you're in an organization for work or maybe you contribute to an open source project that's kind of overseen by uh, an organization that deals with open source, you can be added to those as well. Enterprises, this is on the uh, company side of things. So if you belong to any enterprises for your uh, job, stars are going to be your favorite repos. If you have any sponsors for your project, we can see those here. Um, and gists are like small snippets of code that you can share and not have to create a whole entire repository. So lots of different things that GitHub offers. You said there's um, upgrade options for GitHub that are available. So, you know, the, the service itself is free, but you can get into more advanced features and obviously those have a cost associated with them. And then you have your settings. So settings are something that we're gonna see when we talk about how we are going to allow uh, the cloning a repository from GitHub to our local machine. We'll have to do some things in the settings and set up what's called an SSH key, but we'll go ahead and do that in another video. But I just wanted to show you the settings uh, page here. And you can see that you have your profile information, you have account information, appearance, you can do all kinds of stuff, billing and plans, whatever you're signed up for, emails, so on and so forth. So lots of different options inside of GitHub. But now that we have an account, we can start exploring around, uh, we can peek into code, we can download things from the repositories, we can start adding favorite repositories to our GitHub account. So uh, lots of things that we can do now that we have an account but I just wanted to walk you through what that process looks like so that we can get to uh, other steps which involve actually working with code inside of GitHub. All right, so before we go, I wanna go ahead and show you one last thing inside of GitHub, and that is the profile page. So if you click on your little avatar up here at the top, I've already kind of set some of my profile information in here, and what I'm gonna do is click on your profile. And what this will do is it will show you any of your contributions to your public GitHub repository. So all the commits you made, It'll basically fill up this graph with all the different times that you committed code uh, to a project that's public. You can also see over here on the left that it shows uh, some information about you. You can add your website if you have one. You can add your various social medias if you have them. You can even click this little thing and you can put a status. Like I said, it's got a very kind of community driven aspect to it. Very similar to social media, but for developers. It's kind of fun. have to admit that I've never used it, um, but it is kind of cool if you wanted to take advantage of those features. All right, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for coding along with me today. If you like this video, please give me a like down below. And if you're new here, please subscribe. We're going to be learning a lot more about GitHub, Git, web development, front end, back end, and everything in between. So if that's what you're into, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button to see more videos just like this one. All right, well, until next time, be sure to stay curious, never stop learning, and I will see you all in the next video.